up? We are finally back with a killer video. It's long overdue, but it's that time of the season. This is for the ladies, this is for the guys. Mm -hmm. Because we're champions. We're getting ready to talk that fantasy football talk. Oh, but before we start the video, great news. I don't know if you guys can see the bling. Uh, but we got married. And um, like I said, it was, it was really good. And we decided it's long overdue to do a great video for you guys. And it was his idea, so I'll let him talk. I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, we've been doing this for a while. So we, had, we took one season off. But it started back 2007, so this is going to be, this year coming up is going to be our 10th year doing fantasy football. The reason I feel we're very qualified to speak on what we're going to talk about, our 10 tips. We have made it to the championship six times in nine years, and we got four championships total. We actually repeated, we went back to back, and as between 2013 through last season, 2016, we actually been to four straight championships. So we have a little bit of knowledge as far as what we're speaking on, and we're just going to get right into it. We ain't going to have too long of an intro. We're going to get right into our points. Yes. Okay, so number one, know your league format and scoring. What does that mean? Case in point, our league has evolved over the years. So originally it was 10 teams, um, now it's 12. But it's a two quarterback league too. So the typical advice those want to tell you is to wait on a quarterback. Don't necessarily agree with that point. I understand it. I think um, the better verbiage of it isn't to wait for your quarterback, but to get value on your pick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you need to know your scoring formats to know who gets you the most points. And then you base a game plan upon that. Yeah, don't be that guy stuck with Crabtree and wonder why your team sucks. Don't do that. He's not that bad. You just can't build a team around them. Don't be that guy. Number two, develop ideal point total. What does that mean? That's, 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 that's piggybacking right off of our first point. You need to know, once you know how the league scores, who gets you the most points. For a lot of leagues, it's running backs. Our particular league and some others, um, quarterbacks get you the most. It depends on the, the scoring structure. Some have four points for a touchdown, and um, others have a six points for a passing touchdown. But once you figure out, you know, with the scoring format as of the league, you need to come up with a game plan. Now for us and our league, we're, we're very satisfied when we hit that 150 point mark. Um, we're gonna post up yeah. on the screen so you can see year to year. We've had some years we were a little bit under, maybe like that 143 to 148 range, but especially come postseason time, when, it's, when, when you need your players the most, you wanna figure out what point system works for you and why. The reason I say 150 works for us, quarterback score the highest it's a two quarterback league then you got your running backs that score mm -hmm. after that and then wide receivers so yeah. we're we're looking we're looking for different combinations to get us those points and when we get 150 we feel really confident we're going to win yeah. and hey, that's when what? you know you love somebody's butt like when you see the numbers you're like dang i embarrassed them like I, I, I took them to, to school, like literally. And there's the balance too, there's the balance. Sometimes you're gonna have those times where you put in the right lineup, you yeah. didn't leave any points on the bench, but you lost. Our league, yeah. we get rewarded for most points in regular season, so it's all about the mm -hmm. point total. So even when we that lose, money. if we lose, but we get that 150, we know we're consistent, no. we're gonna make the playoffs, nobody wants to see us in the playoffs. Yep. Number four, pay attention to NFL three. schedules. Three, 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 forgot the mo one of the most important ones. What, Number did I three. skip it? Oh my bad, y'all. Number three, draft smart. What does that mean? We just talked about it. Draft for them points. Once That's you get them points, it. once you get them points, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You gotta make sure you're yeah. getting that combination. So guys, watch what you drink. You can't hold it all the way. Don't be that dude, because then you're gonna be yelling out names of people that have been left. Like Michael Vick. <laughs> Michael Vick! Nigga, yeah, no, 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 no. Or what you're going to do is you're going to do. Now let, let me re, re, let me restate this. We've been to six championships yeah. in nine years. We won four times. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not give, I'm not about to throw shade on this person. I love him. He's a he's a beast. Matter of fact, we the same side. He's tore strong, but grunk. We never get grunk because people, at least in our leagues and in other leagues that I played in, people take grunk way too early. He is a little bit injury prone. Number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two. Know your scoring um, system. He hasn't scored but so high, 
in our point format. So why would I take a tight end, even if he's going to be that number one tight end, why would I take him when I could get uh, another stud running back, I can, I can load up on receivers, or just other positions that score higher. So some, you gotta be careful about drafting for points and not drafting for names. There's a lot of people that go after those sexy names. Sometimes it works, but it's all it's a numbers game. You want you want to get your points up. So sometimes it's going to mean you got to sacrifice on the name and just go after the points and that consistency. Maybe this person isn't going to be Think a stud player, but consistency. The names you want to remember are Benjamin Franklin, the people on the Bills that you're. That's what you're playing for, right? Am I right? You got a woman like her. You got to You got to win. She she like Kobe Bryant. Like from Kobe's wife talking about all these seasons you spend in the off season and stuff. You need to be winning. You can't win a championship every year, but at least be competitive. So and keep her happy. Cheap. My man ain't cheap. Don't get twisted. Oh, here you go. With that. Anyway. I'm like LeBron's wife, right? Anyway. Number four, that's jump to pay attention to NFL schedules. What does that mean? Pay attention to the bye weeks. That's number one. Wins are not easy to come by. I, and I'll be honest, mm -hmm. I've played in a bunch of different leagues. There's always, uh, or not always, but there's times where you have a team that goes like, they only lose one game in the regular season, fantasy regular season, or they, they go undefeated. A lot of those teams end up losing in the playoffs yep. and their team comes crashing down or whatever can happen. But what's important to realize is this. You don't want too many people in the same bye week. Wins are hard to come by. So you don't want to yeah. sacrifice a week and say, hey, I'm going to have all these studs. I'm just going to sacrifice losing that one week. You never know how that's going to work out in the long run. But then also, you don't want to compete against yourself. Say, for instance, you you you, uh, you go for Russell Wilson as your quarterback. You load up, you got two stud running backs, you got Russell Wilson. Do you really want Arizona's defense or St. Louis's defense? Even though they're good defenses, that's twice a year you got to worry about your quarterback is going to be affecting your defense or vice versa. Sometimes it can work out, but like I said, for me, it's a numbers game. I like my points to be going up and not down, so I try not to play against myself. That's something you definitely want to keep in mind. Yep. Number five, use Draft Engine F Fantasy Football League book. Now, you know, dun, dun, dun. five is my favorite number. The reason I say this is number five, this is the number one rated book for, I mean, a lot of good reasons. You need this book. You need this book. I'm gonna say it one more time. You need this book. It's so important to get this book. It I've has seen so many, so many guys from our league with two or three different books, and they still wonder why they lost. This is the funny thing about it. We've been you doing this league. That. We've been doing this league. This is gonna be our tenth year. I've never once seen anybody else with our book. We always no. make. We're always. A, we always draft a good team. We always uh, get deep into the playoffs. No. Nobody else even thinks to look. Hey, what book are they using? Or yeah. it's number one rated. It's number one rated for a lot of reasons. Yeah. But they hate him on us, though. Let's just talk real quick about why I like this book so much over other books. The reason I would say it's number one rated, number one, they have um, accurate projections as far as rankings of players. Their statistics is great for that reason. Number two, they have pretty good sleepers. They always talk about who to go for, who not to go for. Um, that rookie that's, um, you know, worth picking up in the draft. Uh, somebody maybe in their second or third year that's fitting to break out. Those are the type of things they like to discuss. Also, they break down each team. So they're talking about not just the schedule, what they like to do in the red zone, third down scenarios. It's great for those flex players, those buy week options, those buy low, and you know you get a, a high reward on those players. All of that stuff is in there and it's great. That's why I recommend that book over others. Yep. Number six, find two to four sleepers based on ADP. Was ADP? That's average draft position. So the qualifier, what we're talking about for sleepers, we're talking about people that you maybe draft later, yeah. but you get high value. Case in point, a couple years ago, we won, um, that was what, the 2015 season. Yes. One of our big sleepers was Kirk Cousins. Now, mind you, our, t our league is a two quarterback league, so you have to draft three. He was the third quarterback that we take, and the last one we taken, this was when you talk about the end of the draft, this was maybe like between like the 12th and the last round. It was somewhere in that range, last quarterback taken. At least in our league, he was the seventh ranked quarterback, but I know for most standard scoring or whatever, he was a top 10 quarterback. That's huge value. Yeah. That's how you win your league because everybody knows the big names. You have consistent people. Once you get deeper into the draft, this is what's going to distinguish the good teams from the great and that consistency. Plus, you never know what's going to happen with injuries. It's always good to have backup options. You want to get value on your pick. 
Um, same thing, 2014. That was the that was um, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. Brown. That was the coming out he party. Did. That was the coming out party for him. He had at that he may have broken his own record, but at that point yeah. in time, second most catches in NFL history, led the league in receiving yards, double digit touchdowns. We got him in the fifth round. It was like the fifth or sixth round. We definitely had a quarterback yeah. already. Um, I think even two running backs at that point in time, mm -hmm. something. But we say, hey, you know what? We need a starter. We need somebody who's going to be good. He was already made the Pro Bowl, I think, once at that point in time. But this was his coming out party. Now it's hard for us to get him. We didn't get him again because why? Because when we drafted him, we had high value. He was the number one receiver that year. And there's a lot of other people taken before him. You got to find that sleeper every year. And yeah. you got to do so based upon the draft position. We're not talking about people that are like dead sleepers that everybody's sleeping on. And you just had one too many drinks and you're saying yeah. this person is going to be good. No, we're talking about people And don't with follow high everybody in a draft too. Like, That's another if good you point. see everybody going for wide receivers at one point in the draft and you see the number one tight end sitting there why would you go for the fifth best wide receiver when you can get that number one tight end like i think you mean the opposite well i'm just saying the I'm point saying. being is this if you i think which what happens I, i've been in a few different drafts what tends to happen is what is what i refer to as like a draft trend so like yeah. say um, in typical standard leagues, right? Everybody is going running back, wide receiver, running back, wide receiver. And you say, you know what? It's the fifth or the sixth round. I still see Drew Brees. I still see Brady. I see Aaron Rodgers. Get that person. I don't care yeah. which scoring format it is. They're going to be consistent. You can, if it's a one quarterback league and that's and all they're unpredictable. People don't know what you're going to do. Well, besides that, this is consistency. Why would you want to d depend on somebody breaking out? Like if you had Matt Ryan last year, great. But do you really want to depend on people that you're uncertain of? Um, do you really want to depend on somebody, we'll say, like a Tannehill? He's been good, and a couple years ago, he had like a 4,000-yard season, um, 20, I think it was 28 touchdowns or something like that. And that's great if you have them and you got lucky enough to draft them, but that's not what you want to depend on. You get that stud quarterback, you plug him in every week, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about that position. You're not guessing, and you know you always want to pay attention to stuff like that. Don't follow the trend, start the trend. Yeah. Number seven, play to win. Don't leave points on the bench. What fellas, does that mean? Ladies, come on. That's overthinking it. Sometimes you know how you're bad I've seen it. But you're I've seen somebody, their whole bench played. I thought it was in reverse. I thought their bench was their starters and their starters was the bench. That's how bad it was. Like, how your starters get negative points? That's sad. Well, I don't know how a lot of other uh, leagues, because there's the Yahoo, there's different leagues. Yeah. We, the leagues we played in have been um, through ESPN. Even if you don't have ESPN, I think you should download that app. I think you should go on there and check yeah. it out and see how it's functioning. Because one thing that's great about that, and we're going to post some of the stuff so you can see it as we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. There's rankings per week. So if you see you have a strong matchup, whether it be your quarterback, your receiver, your running back, yeah. there's, you can play to the strength of the matchup. Now, we're not saying overthink it. And if you see, you know, you have like a stud player and they have an okay matchup, but you have a, a, a player that's not a stud and they just have a better matchup, you don't want to just throw somebody in saying, oh, well, this person um, has a better matchup and I'm just going to throw them in there. You want to you want to think about it, but you don't want to overthink it too much. You want to put the best possible lineup in and you want to be happy with that. You, you want to make sure um, you're paying attention to the injury reports. You're not leaving um, points on the bench. Yeah. If you have a flex spot and maybe somebody's probable, mm, say for yeah. instance, you got a flex spot, right? right. And one of the um, players that are um, that can go in that flex spot is a running back, but they're questionable. But you got another one who's pretty consistent. Go ahead, throw them in that running back spot. If they're a running back, leave that flex um, spot available. That way, if that person who is probable or questionable, you mm -hmm. can substitute them running back or wide receiver. If you, yeah. it's just sometimes it's just about positioning. There was a time we lost a tiebreaker because it's a two quarterback league um but the main quarterback is the one who determines the tiebreaker tie we yeah. had the most points put them in the wrong spot lost the matchup stuff yeah, like that, that you, pissed me off good mm. thing it was regular season was not in the playoffs though but you don't want to cost yourself a win you don't want to cost yeah. yourself in the playoffs just make sure you're being strategic about what you're doing that's something to keep in mind that's true yeah and that ties into our next one which is number eight start your studs don't overthink Playoff time. I can't. I can't stress this enough, especially in playoff time. Yeah. Once you've made it that far, you got yourself a stud running back, a stud Don't whatever. Show. 
don't don't yeah don't 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 do this don't do this because you're overthinking it yeah. you're trying to you're trying to be too cute you're trying to outthink your opponent yeah if you made it that far with your studs stick with be confident in your players know what they do go by the history too if you've seen that this person is not having the best of games and you see another person that may not have that name but you see their numbers are consistent put the player that has the most consistency in the damn spot yeah it's about like i said it's, it's a numbers game it's a numbers game sometimes yeah. in your league too there may be things specific to your leagues that work out in your advantage better than others case in point with us um last year we made it to the championship I'm not gonna lie, we didn't have like super stud um, players across the board. Um, our main quarterback, who was the most consistent for us, was Tyrod Taylor. Um, our running backs, um, we had some some issues. We had Adrian Peterson, he got hurt. We had Ty Gurley, he underperformed. We had Lamar Miller, he somewhat underperformed. But at the end of the day, we have rewards for people that um, get a certain amount of carries. So guess what? Even if Ty Gurley had that game where maybe he was fortunate enough to score a touchdown. And he got like only 70 or 80 rushing yards, but he ran the ball like 20 to 25 times. We get rewards for those points, especially the same thing of PPR. Some players are better in a PPR format because you're getting those catches and maybe not the yards and everything balances out. So you, you always got, it's a, it's a checks and balances thing. And it's always about the points. You don't want to leave points on the bench. You don't want to overthink it. You want to trust your, trust your players. If you're drafting this player, even if nobody else has the confidence, you have the confidence in that player for a reason, especially if they're a stud player, stick with them. Don't worry about the matchup. Maybe they have the best game, maybe they don't. But guess what? You made an investment, own that investment. Especially if you're in one of those auction leagues and you have to pay to get a certain player, why would you want to waste your investment? Yeah. It's not smart. Well, number nine, be patient, don't rush cuts or trades. Case in point, last year, I'll be honest, we had the fantasy league won. It was our fault we didn't win. It was just, sometimes you just can't help yourself. Like, so what, the way Is it my works. Fault? Huh? My fault? Oh, it's just my fault. It's just my fault when we lose, but it's everybody's reward when we win. I see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. But no, seriously, what happened was um, we had the le the way our league works, at least. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, real football in the sense that if you win, you have the last pick. If you lose, you have the first pick. Everything else is kind of like, um, you know, random. It's like a lottery. But mm -hmm. what happened was we knew with the last pick, we knew certain players weren't going to be on the board. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of trades that tend to happen in our league. So every yep. pick was a valuable pick. You and know, everybody just be hating on us because we just that good, you know? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, just quick little sidebar. Uh, what happened a couple years ago, this was 2013. That was another championship, really, that we should have won. I'm just saying this does not, you know... Um, Anyway, what happened was this. We did one. This was a year we actually had um, two teams. But what happened was we did a trade. It wasn't an, a necessary trade, but it was something that was um, had a lot of value, but it didn't work out. We did a trade where we had Luck and Marshawn Lynch, and this is, you know, in 2013. So this is years they both of those guys were top tens in their positions. And we ended up doing a trade to get Drew Brees. So we compare him with Aaron Rodgers. Problem was part of that trade was Ray Rice and the rest of our running backs weren't that stellar. So although we had Breeze and Rodgers, now also keep in mind, this was 2013. This was the year Rodgers got hurt. So not only did we lose a running back, we essentially lost a quarterback for most of the year too. And you can look and see, we're gonna put the chart up there. That was one of the years we didn't have our highest point totals. Like I said, you wanna keep in mind what your point total is. We saw the potential to have two of the top three, four quarterbacks on yep. one team didn't work out no, we were didn't. we were really late on the running back position wide receivers were already okay but not great we actually had Demarius thomas who was top three that was the year really peyton broke did. all the touchdown records yeah. so had we kept that team intact or 2020s hindsight yeah, if we would have just drafted drew Brees instead of rogers we could have potentially in 2013 um because we also had a good tight end too we could have had andrew luck Drew Brees, Marshawn Lynch, Demarius Thomas, Greg Olson. That's your championship right there. But just, you know, doing too much. Or the person we traded with, he wasn't having a great start to the season. He was panicking a little bit. He put people in a trading block. We went for it. And to this day, people say, hey, they got the best end of the deal. Why would you do that? Those were two stud quarterbacks. 
Um, thankfully, Rodgers got hurt, so we didn't have to deal with that. But in reality, we didn't get the better end of that trade. We had some great games. We actually destroyed some people. Like one time when they were both together and healthy, we had like a game where I think um, it was either Breeze or Rodgers. One of them had almost more points than the other entire team. Like we killed yeah. we, we had like over 200 points, which in any yeah. any scoring format, that's ridiculous to get over 200 that's points. That's bad when you spank somebody like that. I ain't going to lie. You look at that, you're like, dang, I did that to him. And that was the upside, but guess what? It wasn't the playoffs, and we didn't win that year. So having that discipline, what did we do the next year? We came back. We had Romo. I know it's hard to believe. Yeah, we're Eagles fans, but guess what? We trying to get our money, too. We had Romo as one of our quarterbacks. We had Matt Ryan. This was 2014. Mm -hmm. And then we had some running backs. We had balance. We scored more points. We were yeah. consistent in the playoffs. Good to go. No problem. All right, now number 10. Get two to four starting running backs. Two to four of the top 20. This is probably, I know y'all probably saying, y'all did all this talk about quarterbacks and I witness that. Y'all sound crazy. We're not saying that. This is the point. You do build your team through running backs. Every single year we won or made it deep in the playoffs, I guarantee you we had one of the top five running backs. If we didn't have one of the top five, we had two of the top ten. And that's very, very mm -hmm. critical. Because think about it. If you're in a 10-team league, even if you're in an 18-team league, 12-team league, Mm -hmm. If you got two of the top 10 running backs, that means out of mm -hmm. all the potential starters that they are, as far as getting points and getting the most points, you got two on one team. Yeah, That's almost like cheating, but it's not. You have to find those sleepers. You have to get those value yeah. picks, right? Yeah. So that's what you mean. You need to build your team through running backs, but also don't wait on a quarterback. Think about it. If you can get mm -hmm. two stud running backs, two of the top 10, maybe three of the top 15 the top 20, and you have a top end quarterback, maybe not the number one quarterback, but somebody in that top 10 to 12 range, and you got that consistency every week, you're going to be very, very hard to beat. And it's not all stud names. Yeah. You know, a couple I mean, had, if you're smart too in your league, I mean, I suggest you just build your team the way you want to draft this, so you ain't got to worry about nothing. But if you know of a certain person in your league that just gets trade happy crazy, and they take one of the players you really, really want, whether it's a quarterback or a running back, take somebody that you know they want and use that as bait for them. And then just get what you want. But that's like, like I said, it's like a 50-50 chance because you don't know if that person really is going to do that trade with you. And it's just easier when you do it first, right, the first draft day because you don't got to worry about nothing. That draft day, that's very critical. Because let me, I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to our the first year, 2007, right? We had a, it was a killer team. This is the thing. Our league has always been a two quarterback league. Guess what? We wanted with one quarterback. We had one steady person. You know who that was? It was Peyton Manning. He was awesome. 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, pencil it in, no problem. We had Peyton Manning, but this is what we did. We keep, we tied that to three running backs. Now, if you're listening and maybe you're a little young, you don't remember these players, or you just think, how can you win with these players? We had Clinton Portis when he was on the Redskins. We had Willis McGahee when he was still on the, um, on the Ravens. He was fresh. His, you know, his legs weren't, weren't messed up. And we had Jamal Lewis. This was towards the tail end of Jamal Lewis's career. He was actually on the Cleveland Browns in 2007. If you remember that season, they didn't make the playoffs, but it wasn't a bad year. They actually won 10 and 6. Um, Derek Anderson was pretty good. But notice the three names. All three of those running backs went over 1,200 yards. All of them had at least um, eight to um, eight to ten touchdowns, so they were scoring. They gave you the yards. Some could catch a little bit. It wasn't just about having those stud names like the like Damian Thomasons of the world. At that time, he was the best back in the league. He could do it all. Everybody wanted him. We couldn't get him, but it's about finding those those values. Oh, and by the way, this was the other thing. Guess who else we had? We didn't go crazy on wide receivers. We had Randy Moss here. He broke the touchdown record. 23 touchdowns. How you think that felt plugging him in every week? It was yeah. safe. And people thought, oh, you're taking a wide receiver too yeah. early. We took him earlier in the draft than people thought we could. It was definitely within the first um, three or four I'm rounds. Unpredictableness, man. Gets but guess wins. what? We got we, we, we got value on our running backs. Because like I said, mentioned, these were three of the top um, ten running backs. Two of three, I want to say we got later in the draft, definitely round six or later, but we had high value. 
we saw the value in Moss. We're like, listen, he's a touchdown machine. He's going to be motivated playing for the Patriots. Guess what? They won 16-0. He broke touchdown record. Did we expect that? No. But we expected him to be consistent playing with Brady, which he was. And we were able to combine those things. Also, Antonio Gates, that was a tight end. That was like having another wide receiver at the tight end position where we're going after, you know, a bunch of different receivers and looking at different matchups. No, but we had steady people we can rely on, plug them in, we won. Um, thinking back to, um, what, what, what was the year I was going to mention? Um, the 2014 season. You know, we had... 14 trophy right here. <laughs> oh, ring two. You got to put it closer. You let the people see it. Oh, we're going to have a picture. That's for the oh, Don't worry okay. about that. But, uh, y'all going to see it. Y'all going to see it. But 2014, value on your running backs. We had um, guys like Jamal Charles. We had, um, who was the other one? Matt Forte. Now, some of y'all that know fantasy football would say, well, those are studs. Who who went and went those guys? How did you get both of them on the same team? It's about the value of the pick. We had other guys that we paired with them. So in combination, this is the 2014 season. Jamal Charles, Matt Forte, Antonio Brown, um, Tony Romo. That was his last good season that he was healthy and played well. Um, Matt Ryan. Yeah. Um, I think we might even have Greg Olson. It's going to be on the screen, so you'll see it. The point being is this. All of those combination of players, when you hear the names, Romo gets a bad rep for throwing turnovers and stuff, but he's actually not that bad. He has one of the highest passer ratings in the history of the NFL. So I'm looking at that. Even though I'm an Eagles mm -hmm. fan, I could be objective enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to be a homer. This guy, about that money. he has, yeah, they're millionaires they already. Money. They, they're millionaires. Why would I affect my pockets? Because I'm protecting millionaires' money. Listen, they got their money. We're trying to win. Yeah. Good quarterback that has a high touchdown and interception ratio. Have to get him. Matt Ryan had his, he was always pretty consistent. You got a stud in Julio Jones. Plus he plays in the dome. Why not? I'm gonna take a guy like that. Jamal Charles. People had issues with him not being the biggest running back. When's he gonna break down? They thought it might be soon. Some people might have thought it'd be later. Guess what? He didn't break down that year. We had him. We won. Same with Matt Forte. They're worried about the touches. Um, who's in the offense? Is Jay Cutler gonna be turning the ball over? We got value on those picks. Guess what? We made it far. And the same thing. After we won with those players, now Antonio Brown is out there. People know who he is. We know we're not going to be able to get him. We had to do some things. Now, we were fortunate enough to get Drew Brees, but we yeah. we paired Drew Brees with Andy Dalton in, in, in the 2015 season. You know what I'm saying? This this this, this one we went back to back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, As we went back to bad. back. <laughs> we paired him, Drew Brees, with two, not one, two quarterbacks. Because remember... Yeah. We got to draft three in our league. We paired him with Andy Dalton, which was a high value pick. We got him later in the draft too. High value pick. He was top. Now, granted, he got hurt. And thankfully, this this is going to go to show you about that balance. So I'm going to pull up the playoffs. If you recall, if you had Andy Dalton that year, you might have lost with him because guess what happened? He got hurt, I think, in the first quarter of the first round of the playoffs, depending on when your playoffs are. Either your first round or the second round of the playoffs he got everybody zero points he got hurt he was out for the game guess what we won handedly because we we bounced out the rest of our team but point being is before he got hurt and before the final rankings for the year were out he was a top 10 performer good value pick on that one and then oh yeah we had Kirk Cousins too so guess what when when Dalton got hurt we was able to plug Cousins in, and it was it was just like Basically, nothing ever happened. Moral of the story is don't put all your eggs in one freaking basket. Make sure you diversify your team where you know if one part gets weak, you have another side to hold your team up. Because once you, what seriously, when that player goes down, you feel that. You feel it. You and, feel it. And sometimes, there's other times where we have players that got hurt and we didn't make the playoffs at all, but we always bounce back. The point being is this. Treat everything, but don't use injuries as an excuse. Last year, we made it to the championship. We did not have um, a top five quarterback. Our running back somewhat underperformed. We actually had seven people that got hurt. We made it still to the championship because we had consistent yeah. players and we balanced it out. You know what I mean? Sometimes people look at it as like, oh, if I get injuries, 
that's an excuse if I lose. We don't look at it as an excuse. In your mind, you gotta think of that the same way you treat a bye week. If you got a stub player that's out on a bye week, that's the same way you should be thinking about an injury. One person shouldn't make or break your team, although they can be very valuable. You gotta build your team up. And like I said, that's why you do it through the running backs. Running backs, regardless of the stand, um, the, the scoring format, they're gonna get you points. You can you you can be balanced that way. Don't wait too late on a quarterback. You don't wanna be with a bum. Like imagine if you waited till last year to try to get um, Brock Osweiler, and that was supposed to be like, you know, your stud. You can't do that. So the point being is that you wanna have some balance. And now we're gonna get into some of our bonus tips. So why don't you talk about that? Bonus tips. All right, correct previous mistakes year to year. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to one of our guys in the league. Don't be going to them bars, listen to them drunk friends of yours. Thinking that they got perfect ideas on how to draft. Don't do it. Just just buy the book. Do your research. That's it. Like, literally. Get the book, man. That's number one rated for a reason. How much is it? It doesn't it's matter. It's a dub. Not even. Nah, it's 13 hours. 13 Not even hours. a dub. It's well you worth it. it. Trust me. Get that. All right. Keep notes, draft sheets, etc. for review. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you something. This pains me. I'm going to just pick up real fast. If you look at our team last year, we were inconsistent up and down with points. We still made it far. We still got some prize money, too. It's not like it was a total loss. Oh, we're yeah. just used to winning. Mm -hmm. What happened was what we can correct it, it's going to sound crazy, 2020 hindsight. What we should have had on our team last year, I, I violated the rule. I saw Adrian Peterson. We discussed what we were going to do once we saw the players that were left on the board. We knew in the first two rounds we had to go heavy on running back. We could, yeah. we believed in Tyrod Taylor. Shout out to T-Mobile. He was definitely consistent. He came. He he had a big game in the championship game for us. I don't know how your league scoring is, but for our league, I think he had like 47 points in the championship game. He was huge. He was one of our sleepers. He panned out. Who didn't pan out? Um, wasn't a sleeper, but we had him the year previous. It was Ty Gurley, so we had him in the 2015, his rookie season. We had him last year. He didn't pan out, but he was still going into the draft. He was one of the, the, the touted running backs. Everybody had him in their top five. They thought he was he, he was due for another stud year. Didn't work out, but we saw Adrian Peterson. We said, you know what? We never had him. We always wanted to get him. This is probably the mm. last year he's going to be mm. worth having. Bring him back a bad headache. Yeah, it's a bad headache because you know who, I'm, get ready for this. You know who we could have had instead of him? Even if we took a different combination, it could have been this person and Todd Gurley or Todd Gur instead of Todd Gurley, this person with AP, David Johnson. Oh my God. Like we could have had David Johnson, even with Todd Gurley. Guess what? Last year, Todd Gurley wouldn't have been a bad number two running back if you had David Johnson as your lead guy. Oh, and the other one. I blame him. I'll take, I'll take the fall. That's cool. Because we're not making that mistake again. The other person we should have had on our team, we had him. He went undrafted in another league. We picked him up before week one. He was a little bit inconsistent, but he had a breakout. He had, I think it was three, it was definitely, it was three 200 yard games. You should know who I'm talking about right now if you played fantasy football last year. That was Jay Ajayi. We had Jay Ajayi on our team. He had one good game out of the first five weeks. We was dealing with some injuries. What we should have did, we should have been patient kept him on the bench, bring him out when necessary. He yeah. had a big game in the championship week too. With all the injuries we had, just those two things would have put us over the top. Mind you, we also it's two quarterback league. We also had Tannehill last year. He got hurt. What we could have done based on our our score our league structure, we could have went four running backs. We, we still kept Gurley, obviously. We had Lamar Miller, which although he, he had somewhat of a down year, it wasn't bad. Yeah. But then you pair that with David Johnson, Jay Ajayi, um, Tyrod Taylor's big game in a championship, that's the difference. And sometimes it hurts, sometimes you want to forget about it, you slam the laptop shut, you throw your phone, hopefully you didn't break it, but you gotta you gotta take that. I with, cry. With, she did, she I did. Cry. I had the comforter, I had the comforter, you know. I said, but guess what? Look, we got other stuff. We, oh we, yeah. We still, we, we, we still, we're <laughs> champions, and champions always bounce back. We, yes. we're, com we're coming for blood this year because I guarantee you we will not be making those same mistakes. And trust me, we don't make them often. We're so confident, y'all. We did this video. We're dropping it before our draft and we're sending it to the people. That's how confident we are. She being a little bit extra, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I want my money and I want my new trophy. 
But it's painful. Trust me, it was painful. I still, honestly, I probably still haven't gotten over it 100% because I know yeah. we didn't lose due to being outsmarted mm -hmm. by others. We did it to ourselves. But having that discipline, reviewing it, correcting those mistakes, because it happened before, like I told you. After we went after the two stud quarterbacks, having them on one team, we, we saw we were spread pretty thin on the running back position. We made that strategic change. We drafted a little bit better. We put ourselves in a better position. We didn't have to do it. Oh, but most importantly, while we wrap this up, remember to have fun. It's all, you know, draft day comes once a year. And you get, in a, get together with the guys, the ladies, whatever. And you're drinking, you have fun, eat good food. And like I said, listen to this video and watch that money come in your pockets. You won't have a collection build up. And if you're like us and you really appreciate being that coach of your own team and you're a champion and you want to show everybody a champion, it's like they say, champions got rings. Shout out to Dunham Rings. Very affordable prices. Mm -hmm. You can customize it. They have a bunch of options. They keep adding to it. Keep that in mind. And ladies, if you're watching us, get you some diamonds. Get you a man that can buy you some diamonds. All right, we're out. Peace.